Well, hey there, Lusketeers. Welcome back. My name is Levi. And I'm Jenny. And we have Olivia, Olivia Lusco. Lusco. Hey, hey it's, the it's the three Luscos today. Livy, thanks for joining us once again. Anytime. You're not a guest because you're a Lusco. So you just stroll up here like you own the place. I fit right in. As often as you feel so inclined. If you make it to the right studio. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. true. <laughs> Guys, we've made it to the 12th month of the year. This is December. Like it or not, don't get scared now. I like it. I like it too. Yeah, we're excited. We're excited to be in the month of December, uh, and we're excited to be going on a little break. We're going to take a little podcast hiatus, or as I like to call it, a piatus. Why? Mm. Podcast hiatus. Oh, I thought you were talking about pies. I do love a good pie. <laughs> What's your you favorite pie? Peach. Second favorite, <laughs> strawberry rhubarb. Oh. Third favorite, huckleberry he was ready. Third favorite is Huckleberry? Yeah, yeah. That's really, really surprising to me. I'm talking about okay, the, I the order you... of my childhood love of pies. Hmm. Okay, so, but what about right now? Huckleberry, all day, baby. So Huckleberry is your first. What about a good first? key lime pie? <laughs> you used to really love key lime. I do you love a key Okay, I like all pies. I even like banana cream pie, and I don't even really like banana. Do you like what pumpkin about? pie? Love it. What about okay. coconut cream pie? Delicious. What about apple pie? Eh, could live without it. Okay, so what do you love about a strawberry rhubarb pie? My grandma made them for us. Mm. And uh, rhubarb's tasty because it's sour. Strawberries are not. So you throw them together, bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> <laughs> We're on to something here, people. How does a pie compare to a cobbler? In your cobbler <laughs> is delicious, but I always scald myself with it. <laughs> Eat it too hot, and then you have cobbler, cobbler scald. Cobbler scald. Livy, what do you like? Do you like pie? I don't know. No, I'd rather have cake with no frosting. Yuck. <laughs> just the I do breaded like part? Key lime you pie. just love bread. We've all known that. The breaded forever. part of a cake with no frosting? That sounds like prison. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your well, cake. Minimal frosting, so it's not dry. But just a little bit. So do you slightly like, moist. Do you <laughs> like cupcake stumps? Yeah. Oh, man. I take off the frosting on cupcakes. Are you. And I should hang out together because I like the frosting. So we can uh, do a little trade. I will say, though, I would take pie over cake any day. Mm. I can't say the same. The only cake I really like is cheesecake. That doesn't count. Right? We had cheesecake and pie at our wedding. Yeah, we sure did. Gross. Gross. I'm glad I wasn't invited. <laughs> You're glad you wasn't invited. <laughs> 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 weren't. You weren't yeah. invited. Okay, friends, still to come on the episode. You didn't ask me what I like. Jenny, <laughs> <laughs> what do you like? I like all desserts. So why did I have to ask? Because <laughs> I wanted, wanted to be, be included. known and seen and heard. <laughs> but I did know that. And I do see that. <laughs> right? I've seen it for almost 20 years. Oh, okay, I've good. I've never Just seen making you. sure. I've never seen you turn down dessert. <laughs> Just making sure. That's so fun. Um, <laughs> yes. Okay, so a couple things we want to do in this conversation. Uh, we brought Olivia in. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the year behind us, guys. You know, we're, we're looking back. We're shutting this year down. You know, the, the month of December is all about closure. It's like we're saying goodbye to this year. We're taking inventory of this year. We're going to talk about what we've learned. We're going to take some of those lessons and put them in a, a doggy bag so we can bring them with us into 2024. Mm. We want to decide what we want to leave here and no more is in our lives anymore because we're saying good riddance. Mm. Um, but we also want to talk about, you know, the power of this Christmas season. Obviously, uh, while people are listening to this, we're out on the road on these these tour nights. Uh, we are uh, with Lisa Harper and Fresh Life Worship on recapturing the wonder of Advent. As you're listening to this, there are still... I think five shows left. Uh, Six. One, two, two, three. So, yeah. So, if you're in New Braunfels, Texas, Fort Worth area, Birmingham, Orlando, Bradenton, uh, get on over to LeviLesco.com. Come hang out with us. we got yeah. a couple nights left. Yeah. Join <laughs> us. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be good. Really fun. Recapturing the wonder of Advent. So, that means right now. Some we good are, t-shirts. Just saying. Mm -hmm. We have some amazing merch mm -hmm. on the tour. Yeah. Like one of the coolest shirts ever. Mm-hmm. And that's Olivia Lusco approved. It is. It is, and that's Which a big deal. Which doesn't happen very often. Actually, no, that's not we true. run all merch by you. What are you talking about? No, it doesn't happen very often that I love it with my whole heart. Uh -huh. Sometimes you just love it with it. have your heart. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, that's good, but it 
I mean, I would better. buy something else. Yeah. But that's, well, You're like, huh. Yeah. That's true. This one's really good. I think the design is phenomenal, mm -hmm. but the blank that we went with for this shirt is uh, is one of the coolest blanks yeah. ever. So it's only available at the, the Wonder of Event Night, so you got to get out there and check it out. Mm -hmm. um, so we, one of the things we wanted to talk about was Advent. Um, when, when we talk about preparing for the coming of Jesus, that's what that word Advent means. Uh, so I thought it could be fun for us to talk about how, um, how generosity and the Advent season, how our hearts have been and are being prepared for Christmas uh, by, by giving. And I think a lot of us are thinking, hopefully, if we're doing it right, around this time of year, um, about the poor, about people who are suffering, about people who are struggling, right? I mean, one of the things you read in the New Testament is like, hey, don't forget to remember the poor. Paul said, it's the very thing I wanted to do because he was trying to ask like, what should Gentiles getting saved and being brought into this relationship, this house of faith alongside Jews, right? Because salvation's to the Jew first, but then also to the Gentile. Well, here we are. And he's like, well, what should they do? If you're, do they need to go get circumcised? Do they need to keep the law of Moses? He's like, no, no, no. Just you don't forget, don't forget the poor. That was one of the big things, yeah. you know, to, to remember. And so I think one of the things we want to not forget in our Christmas celebration and in, in our lives is people who are less fortunate than ourselves. Yeah. So Livy, I thought we'd ask you because, you know, you've, you've been growing up, you're 18 now. So here you are, an adult. Adult. It's amazing. Congratulations. Thanks. It's your first appearance on this podcast as an adult. Oh, yeah. That's exciting. That's very exciting. <laughs> how is it being an adult for you? I mean, you've been you've been doing it for at least two months now. So how's, oh, that, yeah. how's that all working I'm out for pro. you? Well, I haven't gotten jury duty yet. So if anybody out there has your hands in that world, <laughs> put me in. She really wants to be. <laughs> really that was her duty. top excitement. And a vote. She was and really vote. excited to vote. And... Yeah, well, the other ones I probably... <laughs> but you're excited to get to serve um, as a part of a jury. Yes. What kind of crime are you hoping to work out? <laughs> I don't even... It could be something boring, like a land settlement. I don't really know. A I land just want a settlement. settlement. Oh, a land or, settlement? <laughs> no. Did you say like that? A... <laughs> you are hoping to get a part of a no, jury no, 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 on no, a no, land no. settlement? <laughs> <laughs> Some, anything. It doesn't Sounds matter so boring. It but she said she's willing. She's, like, I she's willing even for boring. Even if it is... I just want to help out. You want to sit in the jury box? She just wants to <laughs> do her civil duty. I just want to... I, I think that's very or admirable. I really... I, yeah. That never crossed my mind. I, I just wasn't really excited want for to. any of that. What if it's like the Scranton Strangler, you know? I think that would be lovely. Like a big juicy well, murder sad trial? sad for them, but good for me. Sad for... I just want to do something in, in a court. <laughs> that was Toby. Toby was on the jury maybe, for the Scranton Strangler. I thought maybe Toby you want to be was, a lawyer. Right? Toby was what? the Scranton Strangler? <laughs> no, no, I saw... Oh, Toby maybe. got selected for the jury duty. Oh, what was I seeing? I saw something on Instagram. Okay, maybe you want to be a lawyer or maybe you want to be a judge. No. I just You want to be jury. That's a just lot of jury. work. I just want to be volunteer. <laughs> I think that is amazing. I love it. For every person out there trying to get out of jury duty, I hope you feel convicted because here Olivia <laughs> Lesko turns 18 and she's not looking. And it's all I want. It's all she wants is to be on a jury. Wow. Um, but yeah, generosity... Advent, getting our hearts ready for Christmas. Lily, why do you think it's special at Christmas time to keep the poor in mind, to keep people struggling in mind, and to have a generous spirit of, of giving at oh. Christmas time? Um, well, I think in Christmas time, it's really easy to get, as a kid at least, as myself, because I'm selfish, like everyone is, I'm guessing. Um, it's easy to get caught up in, oh, I'm so excited to see what I get and to hang out with family and to eat a lot of food. Um, but to keep in your mind that not everyone has that experience at Christmas time and that that's what Jesus wants on our hearts. As in our hearts, we're getting ready for Christmas. He wants us to be looking out for everyone and to have what, to give what we have to make it a better um, time of the year for people that are struggling. Yeah, yeah. that's so good. That's powerful. So, yeah. And I love, I've loved um, the day of year end giving. I'm always really excited to give my gift mm. because there's just a lot of joy in letting go of something, I think. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful. Would you explain like what that's looked like for you just even in the past couple of years? Because I feel like it has like ramped up and changed over the years. Yeah. Like as you've kind of been learning about generosity and what that means, yeah. like how has that changed for you over 
over the years? <laughs> um, well, I always thought it was just like the opposite of what you've always said is giving as big a number as you can, um, which is not what you've said. You've always said it's not about what you give. It's about the proportions. So it's if you have a little money and you give a little, it's a lot to you. So when I was giving five dollars that I had it felt like nothing at all mm -hmm. but it was what I was giving um so learning that it's not about the number it's about what it means to you and the I think the message behind it too of giving what you have to God um yeah that's beautiful I love it so yeah wow yeah so good well and I think you know when we talk about like how our hearts are marked for heaven and how, how do I, cause really it shouldn't just be like Christmas shows up and we open up presents. Like, but th the whole point of Advent is like getting your heart ready and preparing and, and, and it's almost like climbing up a mountain, you know, and getting your heart kind of acclimated to the mountain teams, you know, if they can, especially Olympians, they go to the place where the Olympics are going to be ahead of time so they can get like adjusted to the air there and practice there. And I think, you know, for me, as we think about <clears throat> getting ready and, and Christmas worship, it's like this process of preparing our hearts to meet with God and, and being ready for seeing Jesus come into this world in a, in a new way, in a beautiful way, until he ultimately comes again. And, mm. and I just think, you know, y yes, some people, because of tax reasons at the end of the year, uh, s some people, uh, for, for whatever for variety of reasons, may kind of already be on that theme, you know, Giving Monday, coming after Thanksgiving, th those kind of things. But I think it really is and should be tied into Christmas. Because if what is Christmas if not God giving us his best? Yeah. There's nothing ever better given than Jesus. Yeah. God so loved the world, he gave his son. And and he's like that response that's in that song, Gratitude, like what, what do I have that I could give a king? Yeah. Like the three wise men, like, but they knew to come to worship Jesus at Christmas time with gifts in their hands. Mm. And they brought, and, you know, I, I, I personally believe it was because of those extravagant gifts the wise men gave that Mary and Joseph, who were poor, were able to live in Egypt for all those years until mm. Herod died. So it's like their gift literally paid for Jesus to go abroad and stay alive. Yeah. Mm. And so it's almost like for us, you know, I know as a, as a, as a ministry, our, our church that we are part of, our heart is like, hey, what can we do that would put gold, frankincense, myrrh, whatever we have, little or lot, it's just got to be heavy to us, Yeah. into the hand of Jesus to say, hey, God, this is what I'm going to give you because I want to send you into the world. And I think it really does position us. And I've watched this happen in your life. You know, I don't want to speak out of school here for you, but I remember one year you were kind of struggling with what to give and you, you know, you had been saving and saving out of your account. And I know what you, I know, I know what you gave. We never pressured you. It was like, Hey, you can, the kids can earn chores and make money. And, but then we would encourage you to pray about what God would have you to give. And I remember you giving an amount that part of me was like, Oh my gosh, hold it back. You, you know, you, you're giving like, you're clearing out that account, but, but I knew that God was going to reward you. And I knew that it was like something that was, it came from you. And I was so proud of you watching mm. you have that, like, even if you didn't fully comprehend exactly what you're doing, there was a sense in which you're like, I want, I want to give something weighty and precious in my mm. life to God. And well, that faith, that sweet faith that is behind it. That's like, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm, this is what I feel like God's calling me to give. I think it's it's so precious to Him, and I think having the two, a um, generosity leading into Christmas and the wonder of Advent, like literally, we have to fight to keep that wonder, and we have to fight to, as we head towards Christmas, keep our eyes on Jesus because it's so easy to make it about like what Livy, what you were saying, like about getting the gifts or even giving the gifts or um having the perfect ha Christmas that matches up to the, the movie things. or you know whatever. Yeah. And I think it really is such a, a beautiful thing to um lead with what we're giving to Jesus first. Um and I think it just sets us up for a a, a holiday where we're celebrating Jesus and celebrating yeah. our King, and um, we ma we make the priorities, we put them in the right way, and I think that that's so helpful for me personally. Just that reminder of um, 
I want to give glory to God. I want to. I want my life to matter more and big and be a part of something bigger than just me. And um, and that's the way to do it. <laughs> yeah, and I think a lot of people have asked us over the years, like, tell us about how to grieve successfully. You know, I, I, most people watching will know our story. Mm-hmm. You know, that lives little sister Linia's in heaven and. That happened at Christmas time, mm-hmm. you know. So there's all of that connotation of grief, death, Christmas celebration, happy, sad, all those things. And a lot of people have asked, you know, us versions of how is your family still so strong? How's your marriage still so strong? Mm-hmm. You know, how are you, you know, not crippled by the grief of it? Some people get stuck in grief and can't move forward. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I, you know, I would say this is one of our secrets. You know, there's this there's sense in which. Jesus said, where your money goes, your heart goes. Mm -hmm. And I would say one of the reasons that God's in his grace carried us and sustained us is through giving. And I remember every time we would tithe after the new went to heaven, every year end time of Mm -hmm. coming around Christmas and giving and expansion and, and remembering the poor, it just, grief pulls your heart to this earth generosity pulls your heart back to heaven. That's so good. And I feel like that's one of the ways. And I remember like we, Lenya had a piggy bank, you know, and she had all the money in it. And after she was in heaven, we were praying about what do we do with all the money she had saved up, you know? And do you remember the day we we came down to church and we brought all the money in her, in her, that she had left in this world. Mm -hmm. And we're like, hey, let's send it to be with her, you know? And we, one by one, I mean, we were all sitting around the foyer and the Liberty. Yeah. And we just, all of us took turns putting Linnea's money in that, in that box. And it was almost this way of like, let's keep our hearts focused. What, what could we do better with that resource than do something that would make her happy from yeah. heaven? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you remember of that day? Um, little bits and pieces, but I do remember that really well of um, bringing that little jar that we had made um, our own jars out of like fabric and little stickers and stuff. Mm-hmm. So we brought it to the church and... Um, it smelled like old paint and it was kind of Her gross. jar, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we just, yeah, we each took turns putting Now talk a about those jars because that's, that's, that that's always been a key part of, of money and stewardship. Yeah, it was for me and Len. I think less so for Daisy Clover. <clears throat> um, thanks to Greenlight. <laughs> but I mean, I think it's cool. But the same so, concepts happening in Greenlight oh, has yeah. happened it's with just, jars. It's just um, not investments. It's gone digital. Yeah. That's true. Okay, Clover talk about the jars. Let's start with the jars. Let's cool. start with the jars. <laughs> Explain the jars to people <laughs> who are we'll listening. So basically, we would have, we had three jars, <clears throat> um, one for saving, one for Jesus, and one for spending. So each time we did a certain chore, we had heart charts. So if we did something like clean the kitchen or put away dishes, we'd get a heart on our heart chart. Um and then every once in a while, you'd cash them out. And then we'd put um, different amounts into our jars. So we grew up putting, like, at least always 10% of it into our Jesus jar. And then we whatever we like, we'd split into saving and spendings. That's so good. Yeah. And every Sunday when you guys would go to your class, mm-hmm. you'd give the oh, Jesus yeah. jar. Yeah. we mm-hmm. That was fun. I always loved putting our money into the little into our red box at the mm. hallway. Mm-hmm. There's a little stair step thing mm-hmm. you'd step up. Yeah. And so the money we brought of Linnaeus t- was everything in her save and spend jar because her mm-hmm. Jesus jar, I think, was she already empty. She had given that, yep. yep. And then what was in her her spend jar was for Christmas presents for her, for her sisters. Which I was going to take her to do the day she went to heaven mm-hmm. in her spend jar, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, day, the day after she went to heaven, yeah. but... No, um, the day she went to heaven. Oh, you're right. The next it was day be the you next were going day. to yeah, take yeah. her. Sorry. But then she also had her savings. So it was her savings and spendings. Yeah. That yeah. That we there. gave to people there. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was, that was a fun few days. Out, um, or a fun thing to put the money into the jars. Yeah. Yeah. It was almost like, good, you know, like we, there was just a sense of joy, you know, the sense of like, um, like sending it to be with her, uh, in that way. Um, Okay, so now green light. You mentioned that, yeah. yeah. So now it's all gone digital. Yeah. So now we just you'll pay us for certain things. Clover mostly because she's always begging for a little jobs to do. Um, oh, because you guys she don't get allowance. Today asked yeah. me to send her a list. No, we don't. Of have but we should talk about We've why never that's done important. Allowance. Yeah. I actually don't know why, but I've never grown up being like I really want to get paid for nothing. So <laughs> that's it. That's <laughs> it. You just said it. 
Why do you, will you give your kids an allowance? I don't think so. It does feel kind of, it's like, what is it, welfare? (laughs) (laughs) Solid. I don't know. We've always been paid for doing things, so it's just we we didn't grow up with it. So whenever people talk about allowance, I'm like, oh, must be nice. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, What kind of world do you live in where you get paid to just sit on your butt? Yeah. So, anyways. But, so now we have Although I do feel like I will just put. I mean, Money I'll ask wow, again. fairy godmother over here. Look at her. <laughs> but now, or like, we if have... you're going out with friends, I'll just put like ten bucks in or whatever. <laughs> Keep doing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so now we have Greenlight, which put everything on an app, and now we um, there's a fourth jar that we can put things into, which is investing. So we get to pick a like a company. I have random ones. I have Apple, I think, and Amazon, and. Microsoft and things and Clover and Daisy and Lennox get to pick what they want to invest in and it's really fun to watch them watch their stocks go up and down. So cool. I didn't even know what stocks were. Yeah. Until yeah. I was now we're in no way sponsored today. by Greenlight. No. This is not a paid promotion. Um, we're actually paying customers of Greenlight, <clears throat> but we think it's really cool because it allows us to have an app. Each of you get your own debit card mm-hmm. with yeah. a PIN number mm-hmm. and then we can digitally pay you. You can actually do generosity in the app, mm-hmm. Fresh Life's yeah. listed as a charity in there. You can give in that way. It's yeah. pretty cool. And then we're able to convert the stars and yeah. all that from your chore chart yeah. to. But but now you've got a job. You're not mm-hmm. you're not yeah. even just on the on the welfare of our uh, chores anymore. No, it's not. I this is my second job I've had. Right. Job I've had. I worked at Starbucks for a year, and now I'm working at a farm. <laughs> Although you were Which, you were a stand in. Uh, Sitter slash yes, nanny I, during well, uh, COVID. I still, that's <laughs> true. Us. I was the nanny for my siblings. And I still do it every once in a while, yeah. but very rarely. Yeah. So how was that, like, out of that, getting paid for the first time? Like, It was exciting. Your first Starbucks check that came? I mean, to me, it's a lot. But I'm also not supporting myself in a way. So I just had fun with that money and put it towards Jesus and spending. <laughs> And saving. <laughs> went, and went to town? Yeah, I went to town. Um, I liked it a lot. It's I mean, awesome. It's fun to have my own money. Yeah. For a long time, I thought I wasn't a gift giver, and then I got my money. I was like, oh, I am a gift giver. I just could never do it. Totally. So I didn't even realize. It made you want But I love giving gifts. It's awesome. So um, we do want to say that um, if, if, if you are hearing this and you're like, man, we want to get behind something or we're feeling that, that generosity you're in giving. Uh, we want to invite you to, to participate in something as a part of the Lusco to your family here uh, that means a lot to us as a family. And that is our, our Fresh Life year-end uh, outreach offering. Um, we, at the end of every year, we go to outreach partners around the country and world, and we ask them what projects or what um, causes we can get behind. And then we, uh, as a church family, online Fresh Life family, and then, of course, Hey, Lusco's fam as well, is invited to be a part of that, give towards it to see impossible things happen. And then above and beyond that, when those grants are all fulfilled, if they're all fulfilled, it also goes towards Fresh Life outreach and Fresh Life uh, initiatives and expansion. And, yeah. you know, it's how we've gotten ahead and bought land and done different things like that yeah. and seen people come to life in Christ. And it allows uh, us to do what we're doing um, in that way. So uh, I wanted to ask you guys, and starting with you, Livy, um, what uh, of those grants that you've looked at is resonating with your heart? What are you excited about? One that comes to mind first is Charity Water, which um, saves up money to b- dig wells in, I think, Africa, right? We've done them a yeah. lot of different places, mm-hmm. but I but think this year's are in Africa. Because there's all over. Malawi? There's a lot of places to, co- to cover. We finished two projects in Malawi. Yeah. Those ones are done. Which, oh, wow. What's so cool is now we've done like a lot of these yeah. grants and yeah. been able to... Um, yeah. Okay, I've got it right it's really, here. It's a really cool organization, and they give water to This year we're doing uh, yeah. 20... Th- oh, no. As a church, we have brought 23 water systems to life, which means wow. we funded them wow. uh, already fully. And we've done them in Cambodia, India, and Malawi. And now we're going to do two more. So I don't think we know yet where they're going. So we mm. pay for them, then they tell us which ones yeah. we got. Yeah. Love it. So uh, that one's a $20,000 uh, uh, ask, uh, grant, and and when fully funded, if fully funded, we'll be able to do two more, which is like life change. So talk about that. Like when those water projects come on, how life changing is that for a community? Because we turn the tap on, it's like, oh, water came out. But if a, if a village in India or Africa hasn't had that, 
it, it changes more than just gives them something to drink when a community gets access yeah. to clean water. Well, often women will walk four hours a day total to go get water from any source, really. That's not necessarily clean or safe to drink. So it really will shave off a lot of time and effort and energy that could be used for countless other things. Yeah, well, and I just think about, like, what says Christmas better than people getting water? I mean, Jesus yeah. said, I am the living water, mm. you know? So yeah. what a picture. Um, Jenny, what about you? Beautiful. What uh, What of the different projects are you really excited about? Well, I'm always excited about A21 and, um, and being a part of freeing slaves, modern-day slaves, and people who are um, – victims of human trafficking. Like that lights me up. The fact that we get to partner with A21 to help people in this way. And um, I think specifically we're working with A21 in South Africa. That's right. It's South Africa. This year it's their Freedom Center, which is what allows those rescued from trafficking to get aftercare services. Mm -hmm. So it's like re-entry back into life. So they're going to get um, tools to achieve a stable life now independence, and then integration back into community living. Yeah. Because, I mean, I say we, we are part of it in the fact that we get to, like, um, partner with A21, but A21 doesn't just free these people, but they equip them to to live their lives and live their lives abundantly yeah, the that's way a Jesus big trauma has for them. Yes. To however long they were in slavery to now, like, what do, how do I get a job? How do I, you know, like the shock, the counseling needed, yeah. the, the prayer, the, you know, the, and a lot of support that goes into that. Yeah. Yeah. That's massive. And that's again, another $20,000 grant. I mean, we're, I'm looking at these here. There's, there's new living Israel through this grant. Fresh life is going to get to, um, bring the gospel of Jesus in Israel through events or conferences, evangelism, bringing the good news of Jesus back to Israel. Salvation's yeah. to the Jew, then to the Gentile, but now to be able to Bless back and see this this happening. It's incredible. Um, I think Convoy God, of Hope. Yeah. God behind bars is another one that God I'm behind bars. Okay, that's let me find about. that one. Um, this is a ministry to those who are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing every week our ministry brings the gospel. Fifty, sixty thousand prisoners per week are watching sermons um, on online in these tablets. And this grant, if if funded, is going to um, continue to bring streaming to even more sermons, uh, to even more uh, prisons so yeah. that these can can reach, be reached with the gospel. Just the thought of, of bringing the word into prisons is really, like, lights me up. Like, yeah. I mean, we, you and I got to go into a, a, a prison this past year, and I'm just getting to witness that getting to witness the hunger and the desire for more of God and more of His Word within um, the prison walls um, was truly life changing for me. Um, but seeing seeing people who don't have who don't have anything really. I mean they they don't have their freedom, but they are so in love with the Lord and the way that that we're able to um, partner with God behind bars for these kind of like events, quote unquote, to be able to go in and um, lead them and worship and and preach, but also in for them as they're alone in their um, in their space to be able to just at any moment intake God's word. Yes. And it's radically changing people's lives. And I I'm so grateful we get to partner with them. Absolutely. Um, then, of course, we're, we're doing ministry in uh, all the cities that Fresh Life has church in, Polson, mm -hmm. Kalispell, Bozeman. Um, Salt Lake that's, City. That's ministry for homeless, ministry for uh, single mothers, mm -hmm. ministry for those who are looking to adopt or, or foster care, mm -hmm. helping education and empowerment there. Uh, teenage pregnancy centers uh, all around uh, the Flat Valley of Montana, Bozeman, Billings. Salt Lake, yeah, Portland. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, and this totals uh, well over half a million dollars of grants that we're praying, hey, can we? And think to think the Les Couture, you know, fam coming in with us and feel like, hey, I want my gifts. I, I, can't, I can't give gold, but I can give frankincense. I can't give 
Merbit. Maybe I, I got gold. I can, you know, we've seen people, you know, the single mom bringing, you know, a hundred dollar gift. That, that means a lot. It's a sacrifice. And we've seen people give, you know, six figure gifts. And, and I think God's not like, oh, that's a big one. I think he's looking at what sacrifice it takes, you know, yours, mine, that we all get mingled together. And I just love so much the thought of all of us saying like, let's do this. Let's prepare our hearts for Christmas worship. Um, and then above and beyond that, the dreams that, that God's going to do through our ministry. You know, we really want to build, you know, dorms for our leadership college. Yeah. We want to buy land uh, for our Salt Lake Church and Portland Church and and build. And, yeah. and just the idea of uh, the next generation being set up for success. And yes. I can't think of a better investment uh, to see, you know, by the millions year after year, God build his kingdom on, on earth as it is in heaven. But then also how he builds our lives up. Yes. and shapes us even when we don't realize it's happening yeah right? yeah no it's 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 a stunning thing to get to build the kingdom together and to be um like the bible talks about like the the, the church of god being stones built up um each in our own what god's called us to what he's given us what we can bring we all come together and what we can do together is so much more than what yeah. we could do alone. And this lights our heart up. So it'd be, we'd be crazy to not, we, this episode's always, I mean, I'm telling you guys things I like, things we love, we're learning from people. So this is something that for us is one of the most important things ever. Yes. So we would love to invite you in that. So if you want to get more information, links, of course, is going to be in the, the YouTube description and um, in the podcast as well. Uh, if you click more, you can see it down there. There's going to be a link there, but at freshlife.church, you'll click the firebrand give a gift and uh, it's tax deductible and it's going to make a big difference in the world. And yes. we'd be so thrilled uh, that you uh, would take part in that. Um, okay. Now shifting gears here, I did want to talk as we look back, because of course we said 12th month of the year, we're looking back on, um, 2023. on 2023. Wanted to talk a little bit about some of our favorite moments. I've got the episodes here. Ooh. I mean, what a year. We had the Sealies on from Nashville, Sissy Goff. Uh, we kind of started and ended the year with her, which is pretty mm, cool. That is she cool. was on last week. She's a good one to we do that We had the Trouts, we had the Rosses, the Torwaltz, the Turkhurst, Groeschels. Uh, we had J.P. Pocluda, Anthony Evans. I mean, Chad Veach, Brandon Lake. We had a lot of the Giglios. Olivia Lusco was on Walking Your Teen Into Adulthood. So many great conversations. And that's just scratching the surface of, you know, we had some phenomenal conversations. Any uh, lessons come to mind, any moments come to mind from the podcast that you're like, man, I really am not uh, forgetting that, Jenny, let's go. Well, you know my memory. It's all just in my brain. And we were just learning ab about uh, um, what we retain <laughs> and how our brains actually hold on to stuff that we don't even know we're learning. So I'm just trusting that okay. my brain's holding on. Well, to let stuff. me do this. I'll say <laughs> an episode mm. and you can oh. recall some of the, some of the, what you recall from that and how it encouraged you. Okay. Skip and Linya Heitzig, episode 136. Okay. Well, that was special because they're special to me and us, obviously, but I've been learning from them for 20 years three years longer. And I, I'm, their story is powerful. I think what sticks out to me is um, from that episode was his testimony of what, yeah. of what he's gone through in his life. And the um, because he is such a brilliant mind, um, the journey that he went through of how to you like how God was redeeming and telling him how to use his brain for God's glory and going from, the things that he was going through, which I like know. Like full-blown sorcery, occult. Yeah, like. Like Doctor Strange. Astro. You know, projection. Projection. Yeah. Or like stuff that was actually very disturbing when he was <laughs> describing yeah. it. But knowing that that's real and that's actually like so many people. Dabbling are, with the darkness. Are stuck yeah. in that and can't get out. And just the, the occult, thought of, witchcraft, voodoo, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, tarot cards, astrology. Yeah. Um, the thought of how that could help someone who is, is stuck in that. But anyways, um, I just I just love them. Okay, very good. Thankful for them. How about... I'm going to say that about everybody. <laughs> what do you recall um, 
from your and our conversation with Christian Stanfield and Carrie Stanfield. Oh my God. Episode 118. Well, their story is powerful and special and beautiful. Um, I think what he has walked through, um, it, just him being so vulnerable about his journey with um, alcohol and um, them together married and his struggle and him just talking about it, I feel like that was just so freeing and help, helpful um, and strengthening for people. I know for me, God was speaking to me, just different encouragements and stuff. But I think for someone who might feel like they're stuck in that, um, there was just a, a, a liberty and a f- yes. freedom and a strengthening and a grace. And yes. I just um, Addiction appreciate and, their willingness and to... His alcoholism and yeah. what recovery can look like. And um, that was great. Yeah. They also were the ones who, in that conversation, introduced into vernacular a phrase that we have not stopped using since that episode aired Oh, at dinner time. We always have said oh, high lows, but after high the Stanfield, high low buffalo, high low buffalo came from the That's Stanfields. That's true. That's true. Because they said uh, they ask each other what was a high, great thing, low, bad thing, buffalo, weird thing. <laughs> yeah. And that has <laughs> and really. And we actually usually just talk about the buffaloes. <laughs> buffaloes. Everyone's like, yeah, we got a buffalo from today. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very good. So good one. thank good you, memory. Stanfields. But who's for, surprised? Nobody for warping our <laughs> minds. <laughs> All right. How about our conversation? Oh, we have to talk about this one because they have changed the game. Tim and Juliet Ross. Mm. <gasps> what phrase did they give us? Did she give us on that conversation? Not a phrase. A word. Word. The Lusketeers. That oh, was where Juliet Ross on the spot. Wow. Because we were trying it's to like fault. talk about ways we could <laughs> describe our podcast fam, mm-hmm, and yeah. she just goes, "How about those guitars? And we were like shook with joy immediately, <laughs> and that's and it was wow. just also a great conversation. Yeah. Great conversation. I, they're an amazing couple. What they're doing for the kingdom, the basement. I, I mm-hmm. just love them. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Tim and Juliet Ross, no episode one hundred and nine. All right, Jenny, I'll get you with this Jenny. one. Jenny. All right, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? Is giving me like anxiety. <laughs> Episode one thirty four, Max Lucado. Oh, Max Lucado! That was such a good conversation. That was really, really special. He's such a for all the ways that God's using him for how he is such a name. He is one of the most humble human beings and it's just like, ah, shucks. Ah, oh, that's, uh, yeah, I don't, no. I'm so not that great. I'm just, and even just him sharing some of the things that he's struggled with in his life. And, um, and that college professor who told him he's not much of a writer, like <laughs> yes. you should give that up. You're terrible at writing. Yes. Oh, <clears throat> it was, it was wonderful and so helpful for anyone who uh, wants to write or is a writer or like I, storytelling is just great. Very good. All right. Well, it's been an amazing year of podcasts. Can I say one thing? Yes, ma'am. Recently, after the um, John and Lisa Bevere episode Mm. has recently changed my life. Which was... uh, It was just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it was was like literally two weeks ago. Very good. But we recorded it earlier. So I don't know how long it's actually been, but... She said something that I cannot get out of my head. She said, and I think it was kind of flippant, like not flippant, but I think she just kind of offhandedly just said it like, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. But she said, because, you know, you train your kids, but you serve your husband. And I mean, I know both of those things, but the way that she said it in terms of training your kids, so she, the way she was saying it was so many of us We'll serve our kids, serve our kids, serve our kids, which is good. But the point is that you're serving your spouse, serving your spouse, but you're training your kids because she was putting it in the perspective of she's taught her boys. She has four boys. She taught them. They're now all adults, but she taught them to um, like clean their 
their place at after dinner and clean the kitchen. And like they, she just trained them to do these things because she's like, yeah, because you're supposed to train your kids and serve your husband. And it just changed everything for me because I think so often I can get stuck in serving my kids. And trying to train your and husband. Trying to train, but maybe, but just the focus, be, where my focus is at. And I feel like it's really like just changed how I think. And oh, I, awesome. I still want to serve and love my kids, but it's just priority. And you're still priority. working on training, training your husband. <laughs> no, anyways, that has been life-changing for me. Well, you remember that brilliant line from Lisa Bevere. <laughs> Well, I remember that this was the first year we've ever had Hey, It's the Lost Ghost merchandise. Mm. I just want to go on record as saying how glad I am. Other podcasts might give you t-shirts, hats, <laughs> various accessories, but only <laughs> Hey, It's the Lost Ghost will give you a five-gallon bucket. I'm going on record as saying it's probably the only podcast in the world offering a five-gallon bucket right now. I don't now. think you're wrong. <laughs> how do you feel about this merch? I love it. I want one for my room. Yeah, you should What will one. you put in it? Or will you turn oh, it upside down secret. and use Don't it as a, a table? Baby in it. <laughs> <laughs> is that what that is? Yeah, it's a baby. Just be careful. It looks yeah. like someone's sprinkling in it. Like, Don't take sprinkles. shower baths in your bucket. <laughs> I guess not. You know, I don't. You can't be the boss of me. I'll do whatever I want in my bucket. I feel like <laughs> it would be a cool place to put, um, like a plant. You could put a plant in it. It'd oh. be pretty big. Yeah, like a tree. Like a giant plant? I don't know. Yeah. In your room? I, uh, no, but somewhere in a house. I think it would be fun. Be good. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, you can get those. Uh, swing on by. Uh, swing on by the online store, LeviLesco.com. Uh, we also have, of <laughs> course, stickers that came out this year, which those people have been mailing. You guys in are adorable. Their self addressed, stamped envelope. Stamped. Uh, to get for free. Um, but as soon as we hit that 3 million mark, that offer is gone. So mm. you're going to want to rush uh, to get those <laughs> Do you know in. where we're at right now? So people know. I don't know, but you know what? I want to create urgency, so I'm not going to tell Probably 2.9. Let's say 2.9. We're getting close, million, right? <laughs> I don't know. Or just 2.9. We percent. Sent, we sent two <laughs> stickers yeah, and a ninth million. of a sticker. <laughs> um, all right, shifting gears. Uh, wanted to talk a little bit about... Is that how you drive? <laughs> that, was, it, was that you stick shifting? <laughs> is your car no, actually, a rusty <laughs> shopping cart? <laughs> well, you actually tried to teach me how to drive standard, and that I didn't gave, work. I very gave well. up. I gave up on <laughs> and that. And then he gave up. He I think it's because I have the. Anymore. I think it's because I have the option to drive an automatic. I bought an automatic only so you could drive both of the cars in our driveway. I know, you guys. I I'm not fully developed. Well, I'm bless, not a fully developed human. Bless your heart. I don't know uh, how to drive a standard. I wanted to look back a little bit at some of the things we've learned uh, in God's Word this year. Ooh. Because we, you, you have it right here in front of you, the crown of the year. Mm. We spent the year reading through the Bible. Um, and I think some of you Lesketeers joined us. That's right. We had some awesome. Lesketeers join us, get the reading plan, and I, I'm sure many of them are going to be doing the Fit for the Fight New Testament with us. We offered that digital plan and... For the New Testament in a year. Yep, that starts January first. But uh, oh, man, that's we're exciting. W- yeah, right. You I know about that yet? Well, I knew that we were doing fit for the fight, but I didn't know it was only the New Testament. Only New Testament in New one Testament. year, so it's one chapter a day, basically. Yeah, and it's oh. Monday, thir- Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, that's beautiful. Nothing and then weekend, weekends. nothing on the Catch weekends. Catch up on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Wow, you I'm can so still download or request yours at uh, FreshLife.Church. There's a store there. You can get the free PDF or the the paid book, which is. I mean, you're holding the one from last year. This one's even better. Yeah, it's like a journal, calendar, all planner, mm-hmm. all in one prayer guide, all yeah. in one, and it has your reading for each day. Yeah. So if you get that by January one, you'll be able to start with this. But looking back, what do you guys? What were some of the big things that stuck out to you from what you read of the Crown of the Year last year? I, 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 (laughs) no, honestly, like I, even just looking through, like, I feel like God is so faithful when you, when you let his word set the pace for your life. And I, I'm just grateful for being in the word together as a church and together um, as even you and like you and I, our kids started well, and even the Maybe commonality, we bump finish, into someone but... and who's doing it wherever we are, and they're like, oh, I'm doing that with you. And we're like, you know, like, you're spiritually on that same journey together. Yeah. But even just how God's Word is alive, where even what we're learning on the weekends at church, 
like coincide with the things that come up during that week's reading. And then even like when we were doing theological um, boot camp with our with some of our staff and then with some of our church on one of the nights, like the things we were reading on those days had everything to do with what we were learning and reading. And it's just a it just shows that God God's word is alive and He speaks through it. Um, and I think overall, I've just been amazed and getting to see connections in his word of Old Testament, New Testament, Jesus all throughout showing up in the old and connections. Even today, you were talking about like certain stories in the Bible pointing to the gospel. And it's just amazing. And so I don't know if I can necessarily say one thing, but I, I just love reading I just love God's word. Yeah. How about you, babe? The thing that struck me this time, um, because we were reading specifically what's called a chronological plan. Mm -hmm. So the way we broke the Bible reading up, it was not like, well, Genesis 1, and then you're going to in 30 days get to Genesis 30. Mm -hmm. It was what's called a chronological, which is where they, to the best of their ability, arranged it based on... um, the events as they took place in history. Yeah. So you were reading the day David uh, fought Goliath or re- ran from Saul, and then you were in that same pairing going to read the psalm mm-hmm. that they think he wrote in that time or knew he wrote in that time. So, you know, you were reading things in in um, in in real time. So you're not just like Matthew, then Mark, then Luke, then John. You're reading, you know, the, the same account from the synoptics of that account of that occurrence from all three of them. And it's a neat way to read the Bible because it allows you to kind of feel the events as they unfolded. Yeah, And I feel like it created as well um, more anticipation for the Messiah that would have been what they were feeling. Yeah, You, you, you sat with them in the agony of, um, of the post exile and the expectation and anticipation to come to come back from Babylon, and I feel like it. I felt more um, more of that than yeah. I have remembered feeling before. Mm. So I, I did love that. Livy, how about you? What from reading God's Word this year have been some maybe things that have helped you, or even you could answer as well where you've learned to best put your quiet time in your day. Oh yeah. Well, when it comes to crown the year, I fell off in May. I. That's okay. But you know what? I've actually this year out of my entire life also read the Bible more because I've crowned the year. It's a lot. It was amazing. It was so good. Um, but it was three chapters. It's a lot of reading. Yeah. 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 And it was, I also wasn't very wise in the translation that I picked. So it was a little bit longer and Ooh. harder to read. You picked oh, the, you message. Pick the message. Which is no. way more. <laughs> so, oh, wasn't it? I, so. I was reading ESV. It was great. Oh, so but, it was harder. Well, to me, it was harder. I would be reading. And I was like, "This is going over my head," and mm-hmm. I know it's good to read. Um, but I think next year I'll be reading, or this coming year I'll be reading New Living Translation, mm. just because I enjoy that one. It's great. That's awesome. Um, anyways, love it. But as you asked, um, there were a lot of things I learned. I think. Um, that I need to sit on that one for more for a little longer. But to answer your other question, I found that reading the Bible at night is better for me because it's I'm less foggy, so it, it holds more, I think. And then also mm. in one of your sermons this year, you talked about how um, in Bible times, the beginning of the day was sundown. Mm-hmm. So that's how you're going into the next day is you're starting off by going to bed. And whatever you do that night is going to set up for how the next day goes. So I feel like having that mindset of ending slash beginning my day reading my Bible is lovely. That's awesome, Liv. Yeah. You it's are, also, you're wonderful. I like to stay up late. So and someone works. said give God your best. And if you're not at your best yeah, in the morning, I'm you're not. not giving him your best. If you know me, you know I'm <laughs> the least, I'm farthest from my best than you'll ever Olivia, time morning. to wake up. Two hours yeah. later. <laughs> Olivia, it's time to wake up. <laughs> That's so I'm just funny. hear me growling like a bear. Um, That's awesome, though. I love yeah. that. So my rhythm that. right now is I, well, right now I'm reading five books. So I read a chapter from each one. And then, well, I have my five-year journal. So I write in that. Mm-hmm. I read my books. And then I finish with um, a chapter of, right now I'm reading through Matthew. 
Very good. Mm-hmm. Amazing. So I like my rhythm. Sounds like uh, the apple hasn't fallen far too far from the tree reading five books over here. <laughs> Sounds like my, your father's heart is so proud of you. Um, okay, I do have to share something. And I think I told you this, Liv. What? But I've been reading through old journals and I read through um, when I was pregnant with you. And I wrote down that I started reading out loud the book of Matthew to you. Yeah. And I just thought, and then I re- when you told me that you were reading through the book of Matthew, I was like, oh. Yeah. Amazing. Do you remember any of that? I mean, I feel it calling to me when I read it. Does that count? <laughs> it, it does indeed count. It does indeed. She's like, you feel it she's like, me. mommy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that the taste of amniotic fluid in my mouth. <laughs> I can't read about Matthew without craving some food through my belly button. <laughs> responsible for that. I hope you feel sorry. <laughs> I love you reading the Bible to your baby in the womb. You're so spiritual and amazing, Jenny. Gosh. You should see the amount of, you've seen it. You should see the amount of journals she has. Ooh, Probably scary. Probably like two a year for her entire life. Maybe more since in some 13 years. Or, no, no, since yeah. six. When's your first one? She when laid them eight. all out on a table at one point by year. So there were little stacks for each year. And the year they got married had the most by far. It was like six Maybe more. She had some acclimating know. to do. <laughs> She's like, help me, some Jesus. Vengeance. Help me, Jesus. Got to no, train was, this man. Well, <laughs> in my mind, I thought it was a good thing. <laughs> Did she just turn German in my <laughs> memory? <laughs> I, ach, de Luber, I must German myself to it. Wait, that French? I don't know. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> also part caveman. What if you journaled French? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Sacre bleu. That's that all I know. Cool. No, I thought it was a good thing. I thought it was like, like little love letters to herself. Aww. From well, actually <laughs> to yourself. Doesn't make any sense? To God. I mean, no, like just being really happy. And oh excited. God, I'm so happy. Yeah. Because she, yeah, there was that's a lot of that. You, she does write and a, a lot, lot of that. confusion and a lot of. <laughs> I don't. Know, I feel like our <laughs> so first year, we hit a more of a wall. Kind of second year, I feel like. Is that wrong? Was that your first year hard for you? First year, I think first year was hard. A little adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. You were still working at the macaroni grill? I was. Yeah, mm. you were in a tie? I was. You look beautiful in a tie. Thanks. A tire. <laughs> You're a tire. I think you we're good. On. I think we're good here. <laughs> um, okay, so now I wanted to oh. shift gears again, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound of us shifting gears. We're making our way in our rusty go kart uh, to some of the lessons we've learned uh, while preaching this year. Mm-hmm. Jenny, you and I have preached through a lot of different series. Uh, we started off with you in you. five years. And two- oh. oh, I love that series. I'm so excited for in five years when you do it again, mm. which is just, I love it. It's so cool. Explain the heartbeat behind it. Essentially, from what I can what from me my my heartbeat of five years um well because i don't want to say the heartbeat because if i miss say something you know this is what i take it to be um it's just the power of small things over a long amount of time and how um much like even like in a spiritual perspective but also just in life which they coincide but when it comes to a job or what was it one of your someone reached out to you and said that they listened to the first you and five series, you and five years series, um, and that they were at a job they didn't like, and then they what was it electrician? They, they were a rancher be, and they wanted to be. An they electrician. wanted to be an electrician, mm-hmm. and so by the time this most recent five years series came, they were an electrician. They had over five years put in the work mm-hmm. and done the education, and yeah. I just think that kind of thing is so cool of what you can do in what seems like kind of a short amount of time, or actually a lot of. It depends. Yeah. To me, it feels like a long time. It's a medium amount of time, right? But the small things you can do, the little steps you can take, like doing one push-up a day rather than 100 in one day Hmm. for five years is just, it's a big difference. And I think it's really cool. Huge. Well, and for you, five years ago, you were 13. Yeah. Well, Well, I guess when it happened. When I wrote the letter to myself. Yeah, that's another thing. We we wrote... um, Letters to ourselves for five years in the future, mm-hmm. and the church mails them out. So reading mine this year was just crazy. Um, uh, I wouldn't know. I was very hateful. My letter got stolen. <laughs> I know. Uh, our church got broken yeah. into, and of all things, 
my and your mom's. <laughs> no, uh, yours I had got mine. I had mine. Red. He ripped it open. Oh, right. Maybe he thought ripped, it was a check. He ripped in all it. of our Lesko ones open. Yeah, they were all ripped open. Yours. So maybe mine yours had taken, something in it. which is so that... invasive and creepy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so many things got stolen out of my office in that in that yeah. break in. But anyhow, By including a letter to yourself. Mm. I know. So yeah, somewhere he's it. learning all my secrets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's unfortunate. Invasive. Um. Invasive. <laughs> no, that's a good description of it. Liz. He opened up them all and read all of them, but he just, just he only took the one. First of all, your description was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Oh, thanks. Very good. And that was how we began the year. Uh, yeah. w- a couple others. I'll just kind of say them, and you guys can kind of riff on any of this you want. And of course, if you like these, you can go to YouTube and or our podcasts and hear them all. But uh, we did a series called Pioneers. Mm. Pioneers. That was a through good one. Hebrews chapter seven, eleven, eleven. That's the Hall of Faith. It was all the great men and women the Hebrews holds up. And we did a whole uh, series through Hebrews 11 talking about these epic individuals. Um, any of the favorite moments from that? Well, you um, preached on um, – I just – I remember on Mother's Day you preached on Noah's Ark. Noah. And um, – You called it Don't Give Up the Mothership. Yeah. And it was one a wonderful Mother's Day but what I also love is that you also brought up pioneers in history. We, because you did one too. We. Um, and I just, I loved that going back to um, pioneers in the Bible um, who are highlighted in Hebrews 11, but also uh, people in history who pioneered. And I just, it was so creative. I loved it. You did, you did. It's so a lot good. of fun. We mixed in human still living or more recent time heroes with icons in different ways. Yeah. Very fun. Uh, okay. We had a series called uh, Amen, mm. which was all the times or many of the times yeah. Jesus said, verily, verily. Yeah. Or truly. Truly, or truly. Most assuredly. Or amen, amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he would say it at the beginning mm-hmm. of a sentence to explain it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, it's mine, <laughs> my heartbeat of it. <laughs> um, how most people would say what they're saying and then say amen at the end of it or just not at all. But he's saying that, um, actually, I don't remember. I think it meant, from my memory, that, um, well, the religious leaders got really angry about it because he was basically saying that what he said has already been approved and stamped by God. Is Facts. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. He's saying, I don't need your cosign. Right. Yeah. That's this is true whether you like it or not. Yeah. yeah. This is gospel. Yeah. And it's always, every time he says it in the Bible, it's like a mic drop moment. So it's exactly. very cool. Yeah. So all those kind of moments, and that kind of got us ready for Easter. Yeah. The Amen series. That was a lot of fun. Um, one of them was on the cross, by the way. Yeah. When he said to the thief on the cross, Amen, Amen, today you'll, you'll be with be. me in paradise. Which is pretty good. Yeah. That's, that the that's guy got a... to hear and be like, this is true. Mm-hmm. This is happening. So In just a few minutes, I'll see you at them pearly gates, man. Very Beautiful. good. Uh, Northern Lights. Mm. Aurora Borealis. This came from Isaiah's uh, prophecy. He wrote, I will give you treasures of darkness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then right after preaching it, we got to see the Northern Lights mm-hmm. from our driveway. Yeah. Because God's good. Yeah. And that was a really encouraging series. Just the idea of we can see in pain something beautiful. Because you can't see Northern Lights when it's light out. No. So it gave hope to those of us facing hard times. Well, and I loved how you started off that series um, reciting, I mean, saying from memory the whole book of James. Mm -hmm. And it was incredible and so inspiring and... um, just the power of God's word in our life is beautiful. I think I love you. Navigating the ambiguity of intimacy. That was, was that beginning of the year? That was the second. Oh, you're not doing it in order. No, I'm just saying oh, okay. the titles. Okay. <laughs> that was the series we went through this year talking about love, mm-hmm. sex, dating, marriage, and, and, and relationships in general. Yeah, it was good. Um, we also... Did a little series called The Friendship Recession. Mm. Talking about the power of friendship, friendships in crisis in our country and our culture, right? How to friend well. It was powerful. Make yourself at home. 
Mm, I love that series. Series about the church, the who, what, when, and why of church and how. And how. And, uh, and then last but not least, we had a uh, summer reading, which was different authors coming in to speak. We had some great authors give us some talks. We interviewed Phil Wickham mm-hmm. about his book, uh, on our knees. And then that was special. Firebrand, last series of the year. Livy, talk us about what Firebrand means. Um, firebrand, it's basically a mark you wear talking about who owns you. Um, and like you said in your sermons, there's different brands that we pay to wear, like, um, I don't know, Gucci or Nike or vans or something but what we really want is to have the mark on of god on us um from following him and believing in jesus and yeah that's very good amazing and what an honor and what a responsibility it is to wear the brand yeah Mm. and have the name of jesus paul said whatever you do or say do it in the name of jesus Mm -hmm. so we should like a cow who has a brand it's like hey no you're owned by that ranch like no well if if we give it our life to jesus we belong to jesus he's not just our babysitter or guardian he's our owner he's our owner we're not our own and that defines and, and dictates how we live. Mm-hmm. How we're branded changes how we live yeah. and um, should change how we live mm-hmm. anyways. So everything we do and say, it should be like, is this what God would want me to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a pretty life-changing thought to, mm-hmm. to end the year with, to go into Christmas with and yeah. mm-hmm. and all the things. Yeah. What Love a it. year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Beautiful year. Uh, also forget, we had a pretty epic... Uh, Movement conference, yeah, just 2023. Just this little thing. Can Pretty you believe exciting. that? I mean, you're wearing the shirt right it was now. incredible. Movement That's conference, right. uh, year two, our, our youth conference we do, we invite youth groups and family groups from around the country to come hang out with us for a couple of days, camp out, hear God's word taught. I'm wearing the hat too, aren't mm-hmm. I? Yeah, yeah you, you are. are. I'll you looking at it. Yeah. It's my favorite hat we've ever made. It's good. I love it. It's good. And we, what, what, what are you guys remembering as some of your favorite moments or highlights yeah. from movement conference? Oh, well, hmm. you go first. I have to think. I mean, Christine Kane in the rain. Christine was, Kane in the Church rain. Church in the rain was so fun. Yeah, so it's funny. We worry, worry, worry about if it rains, and then it does, and it ends up being one of the most special things uh-huh. ever. It so she beautiful. taught from Luke chapter two about Mary. And mm-hmm. literally, my Bible, I couldn't use my journal because I. I just didn't, but I wrote the notes from it in my Bible, and my notes, my Bible has rain splatter, rain splatter stain. You'll never forget that. I'll never forget it. And no um, one moved, no one flinched. Every student, every group yeah. just sat there and just like got rained on and heard the word of God mm-hmm. taught. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, it was amazing. I was worried for everybody. What if it rains a movement? It's like, what if it doesn't it's rain like, at movement? Actually, is now a new thought. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> we actually love that. No, I mean, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't need to have a thunderstorm, but no. Because uh, the first night, I don't know if you know this, it was real windy, and they came and told us if we get up to this many miles an hour, they have to lower the stage because oh. the stage is a big, you know, stage oh, truck. Yeah. So we were all worried that we'd get too windy, but God calmed yeah. it down right before the session started. Wow. So, God, we would love rain, but not a lot of rain. We love wind, but not a lot of wind. It's like we're getting all picky. Uh, no smoke, please. No smoke, I please. Say that. Yeah. Um, no, but it was just, um, I think. I mean, there's so many moments, but those moments where students would flock to the front of the of the stage to the front and just worship and there was just a hunger and yeah. a desire and getting to be a part of 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 something like that for young people oh. is just mind blowing and I'm I'm just I'm so grateful that we get to do this because yeah, it was, it was it unreal. It's mm-hmm. life changing for all of us. <clears throat> the, the worship with Brandon Lake the last night was incredible, or second to last night. The um, last night, yeah. I mean, the yeah, the final night, the final night, yeah. Uh, Louis' talk, uh, yeah. Robert Madu, yeah. Madu. But I'm thinking when Louis gave that invitation, he did four invitations, I think, or something like oh, that, right? And he was like talking about people coming forward to really, you know, consecrate their lives to God. and He said, but some of you youth pastors need to and Mm, parents need to. And like seeing adults Mm -hmm. streaming down, like setting the pace for their students, like by re-upping their commitment. It was Mm -hmm. powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait for this next summer. You know, we're 
um, just full of faith for it. And maybe you're watching, listening, you're like, man, I need to get there to either come and serve yeah. or bring your you know, youth group or to bring your uh, the kids. And you know, if you have teenagers, bring them camp. Yeah. It's unbelievable. There's yeah. something about being outside. And mm-hmm. you can go to mvmnt24.com, get mm-hmm. information. We'd love to have you take part in it. We're believing it's going to be the best one yet. Yeah. So, all right, you guys, this was a year. I mean, looking back, it's like, this was a year. Yeah. Yeah. And Beautiful somebody year. turned 18. Mm-hmm. So. Somebody. I feel like we have to talk about the summer worship or the um the worship nights. We had oh. some great worship nights. Yeah. Tell us about those, man. So we took time uh, out of the year um to visit each campus and to have a night of worship, and it was just incredible. Yeah, it was really fun. It was just each night was so different, and getting to hang out with the team and meeting people from each campus was beautiful. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we have we, have, we had all these pop ups around. We. Um, one fun personal highlight for me was, uh, after the worship night was over, we did something in each city that we hadn't done before yeah. to kind of like experience the, mm-hmm. you know, something fun in the areas we go yeah. to, you know, we have church in beautiful areas, Bozeman, mm-hmm. uh, Portland, all these are beautiful, yeah. amazing places. And we had never done the Lewis and Clark caverns. It was mm-hmm. amazing. So we caved it, man. It was fun. And a little freaky, right? A little bit. Yes. At one point, our guide turned off or her had all of the lights all turned lights. off. So we got to experience pure true cave dark. darkness. Was it true, true dark. dark yeah. True dark. So and she was giving a story about how someone got lost in the caves at one point for a few days and he went insane pretty he much. Went cave crazy. Yeah. But it was just crazy to it was so cool. Yeah. It was amazing. The darkness that that's that dark you can like taste. Like it's yeah. like you it's like Yeah. Oh, it's wild. And you can't you put your hand in front of your face, you can't see it, you can't see anything. And then you start to lose, like, track of where you are, and mm. it's wild. They said when they found him, he was, like, he in was the fetal talking. position, crying, yeah. talking to himself. And he had heard his friends at different points that he thought were talking to him. And, that like, were hallucinated. Come follow us. It's, it was wild. If you no, have a chance, wild. you should go. Yeah. Because it's amazing. Go yeah. to the Lewis and Clark Caverns when you come to Movement Conference. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. On Plan your way. on your way out or way yeah. back. You know, we had youth groups come, when one in particular come from Massachusetts. They came a week early and did a mission trip. Yeah. Found something, wow. some different things to do while they were here. I love Stunning. that. I love that heart. Yes. Spirit. So beautiful. Spirit of the West. Spirit mm. in the West. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Right there. Well, we've enjoyed this year. Thank you, Livy, for coming on with Thank us you, today, yeah. talking about the year behind you. us. Um, we are excited for what God's going to do the next year. We got some really great podcast conversations planned on Hey Celesco's, beginning with a Q&A episode. So the first episode of the new year, which is in January, is going to be Q&A. And if you have a question you want to ask us, can be about anything, Oof. anything. Wow. Maybe you ask some questions for Liv. We'll save them up. We'll have her on maybe for that. But we have uh, some great um, uh, plans for the year, some great podcasts. You can go to either of our websites or to uh, the link in the profile, description, whatever, show notes. There's a place... To ask questions, you can ask them. We'll get to them. If not, at this next one in a future episode. Yeah. Uh, but we have some great guests coming on. We'll have some great uh, mm-hmm. conversations, and it really means a lot that we get to every week uh, spend this time with you. I mean, yeah. Jen, don't you think? I, it's special. I'm grateful. Mm. It's, it's been a good year. It's going to be a great year. Hallelujah. Wow. <laughs> Praise ye the Lord. And with that, we hope you have a merry Christmas. Yes, we uh, love you, Lusketeers. We are grateful. So, all right, we love you. See you in the new year. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to swing by LeviLusco.com and JennyLusco.com to see what's going on in our world. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And in the meantime, we would love to connect with you on social media. Jenny Jenny and and Levi Levi Lusco, out. out.